This is the buggiest we have seen one note since. There were too many features we couldn't consistently get on all the iPads in the studio. What happened to OneNote? Hey guys, it's Rob Zipak with Paperless X, a channel dedicated to easing your digital transformation. If you're new to our channel, hello. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you know each time we release a new video. And if you're already subscribed, fantastic human, welcome back. Microsoft OneNote is a cross-platform note-taking app and whiteboard app that works and syncs with Windows, Android, macOS, iPadOS, and iOS. Not many note-taking apps can sync across all platforms like that. Each of these operating systems has unique features that change your user experience, which can be a lot to take in if you want to use all of them. The app is free until you have used up the free 5 gigabytes of OneDrive storage that comes with your Microsoft account. After that, you'll need to pay for OneDrive because that is what the app uses to sync across the different devices that it supports. This review focuses on the iPad version of OneNote. The user interface in Microsoft OneNote has dramatically improved since we last did a full review of the app a few years ago. We love the modern and minimalist look of the app. The left side bar for your notebooks is great for quickly switching between notebooks. Sections and pages. You can bring it up when you need it and tuck it away for space on the screen to work on your notes. Creating a new notebook in Microsoft OneNote is alright, though it can be simpler. You can then name your notebook and choose a color for its icon. There is quite a decent variety, but from our experience, you'll probably use one color for this. At least I do. The app tells you where your notebook is located, which depends on the Microsoft account you're using. The information feels unnecessary if we can't interact with it or change it in any way. Compared to other note-taking apps on the market, Microsoft takes the longest to create new notebooks. Like you wait for what feels like forever. Your notebook automatically gets a new section and page that you can both rename. But you can only change the color for your sections. OneNote is both a handwriting and text-based note-taking app. But on the iPad, when using the Apple Pencil, Handwriting makes more sense, so that's what we'll focus on. By default, the page template in the app is plain, but you can change it to use ruled and grid lines that have three line spacing options each. You can also change the page color to one of 16. We like the colors, they are light and perfect for a background color. Microsoft OneNote's Infinite Canvas has become popular over the years with more and more note-taking apps adopting it. As long as you don't intend to share your notes outside of your note-taking app, why limit yourself to a fixed page size, right? We would argue though that for those rare occasions, perhaps, we ought to have at least some fixed page sizes in the app. What do you guys think? Are the days of fixed sizes over? The pages in the app extend downwards and sideways to the right as long as you keep writing. It makes OneNote perfect for brainstorming and mind mapping, 
which makes it an excellent alternative for those who don't like Apple Freeform. The setup in OneNote does not allow for custom page templates. So if you're big on those like we are, then this is not the type of app you want to use. We obviously said that we can't use our digital notebooks in OneNote, but we'll be fine. Ballpoint pens are not the greatest. At least for me, they're not. We were hoping to at least have more pen types in the app by now. Microsoft has added a dynamic pen setting that doesn't seem to do much for the pen tool. The only difference you notice is in the pen thickness when you toggle it. But effectively, the pen remains a ballpoint pen. The pen tool has six fixed pen sizes that start off too thin to become quite thick. The first four are usable for handwritten notes, but more pen thickness options would give users a wider thickness range to work with. You then have glittery colors for your pen. The glitter colors used to make the pen tool feel smoother than the plain colors, but in 2024, they feel the same. You can use custom colors for your pen. Sliders are not the most accurate color picking tools though. So if you love using specific colors, you won't like the option you have in OneNote. Of all the options available, they had to pick the worst. Custom colors are definitely a pain to use in OneNote. The bright side is that handwriting experience in OneNote is good. Taking decent notes in the app shouldn't be a problem. The highlighter goes behind your ink, so it does not dim your notes when you layer it. We also like how it doesn't register overlaps of the same color. but it can pick up those of different colors. It's just a small detail that makes highlighting in the app a little bit more pleasant. Using a straight highlighter is not as pleasant though. You have to keep reselecting the shapes tool to use the straight highlighter, which is not very convenient. The tool has five fixed sizes, one less than the pen tool. The Ferris toolbar in OneNote can house a maximum of 14 pens and highlighters that you like using. That is a decent number to work with. Let us know if 14 colors are too few for you. Adjusting a pen tool once you've added it to the toolbar is quite easy. In OneNote, the Ferris toolbar is also the main toolbar for your writing tools. That means it lacks the mobility we're used to seeing with Ferris toolbars, but it's quite functional. The eraser erases per stroke and per pixel. They've tried to make the pixel eraser smoother, but it's not quite there yet. There's some progress though. It would help if the app had a way of letting us know which eraser we're using. We still can't selectively erase the highlighter alone, which is disappointing in 2024. OneNote does not have size options for eraser and you won't miss them. I mean, it's just an eraser, right? It makes sense not having sizes for an eraser. But when you do, it's great. It's just not something you'll miss. Microsoft OneNote does not have a zoom tool. You can only zoom in directly on your pages, which we feel is better. However, the zooming range for your pages in the app is quite small. You can zoom out to 25%. 
and zoom in to a maximum of only 200%. It's better than nothing, but a wider range would be more helpful. At least the app displays the zoom percentage on your screen, that is always good to have. It also has some preset zoom levels for 100% and page width zoom levels. We love that these are easily accessible, making it very easy for you to revert back to them when you zoom in on your page. OneNote makes an excellent whiteboard because of all the items you can add to it on the infinite canvas. The text tool in the app used to be the best in a handwriting note-taking app, but that's changed as more apps caught up to its features. Your text goes inside invisible text boxes, so it's very easy to add them to any part of your notes. We're hoping to get some text box border options by now to make the text boxes in the app prettier, but they're not doing that. The app also still doesn't rotate your text boxes, which makes them even more boring. The app has a lot of fonts that you can use, but we're surprised it still doesn't support custom fonts. This was definitely the app that should support custom fonts, considering they have all the other fonts covered. The font size range is decent. You can make your text bold, italic, underline, or strike out. And the app supports superscript and subscript, which is very rare to find in a handwriting note-taking app. You can also change your font color and even highlight it. You can use custom colors for your highlighter, but the ones available are quite decent. Chances are you won't need anything extra or anything different from what the app is already offering you. OneNote has three alignment options for your text. The app also has preset font styles for your headings. Page title. Citations. Codes and code. We still can't change these or at least save custom ones, which we should. That would just make text that much more interesting in the app. You can add numbered, unnumbered, and checklists to your notes. Like your text, they're contained inside text boxes. OneNote has six conventional numbering types and nine for your bullet points. The other two numbering styles are easy to mistake for your notes, which makes them difficult to appreciate. Checklists also support levels but it seems OneNote hasn't made a lot of significant updates to the tool in the past two years. The feature still doesn't strike out completed items, and that's just disappointing to see. Apple Notes and Noteful have changed how tags work in handwriting note-taking apps. So the many tags in OneNote are not as exciting as they used to be. They're more fun than lists and help you add more details to your notes than simple bullet points. But over the past few years, tags in note-taking apps have evolved to catalog our notes. They are more interactive now, but we don't have that in OneNote. We're not even sure how the app would bring that out, considering how it uses tags. The tags in the app are still useful, 
to mark items you might want to discuss later, like a project idea, questions to ask, or a simple film to watch. Sticky notes in OneNote stick to the right side of your screen. They're great for noting items you don't want to forget, which is handy if you're juggling too many things. We love that you can create them from your notes in case you need to follow up on something, so you can just quickly create a sticky note from your notes. They come in seven colors and can contain text or images. The text in your sticky notes supports some basic formatting and simple text. Sticky notes make it easy to add ideas to your notes without rewriting them, so you can also take ideas from sticky notes to your notes, which is cool. That's probably the best way to use the feature. Let us know how you're using sticky notes in OneNote. Is this a feature you find useful? So much that you'd want it in other note taking apps. It's pretty cool and unique. In OneNote, you can use the Shapes tool to draw shape presets. Or simply draw a shape and watch it transform. Free hand drawn shapes are always better, especially because the templates available are not so great. Arrows and Cartesian planes are the most useful since we can't hand draw those ones in the app. We've not been able to draw irregular shapes of any kind. Not surprising because OneNote hasn't had the best support for irregular shapes anyway. Once drawn, you can't adjust your shapes, which is a bit of a pain in 2024. You can only resize, stretch, and shrink your shapes, which is not enough. Changing their color and body thickness is also great to have, but it's quite basic, to be honest. Rotation is still limited to fixed angles that you can't control. So, the Shapes tool in OneNote is one of the worst you will see in a handwriting note-taking app. And if shapes are a big part of your notes, this is definitely not the app you want to use. Because shapes don't even support fill color in the app. So, they are not fun or versatile enough to work with. We're always happy to see tables because not many note-taking apps support them. Though adding tables is very simple, adding more rows and columns to the 2x2 two two table you create can be a massive pain. But it's still better than not having tables. In OneNote, tables support text input with some basic formatting to make your text bold, italic, or underline. Column width is variable, depending on how much you add to each column. You can also adjust them with limited control over how the final table looks, but as basic as they are, it's great to have tables in a handwriting note-taking app, so we're happy that OneNote has that. Adding single or multiple photos to your notes is fairly simple in OneNote. You can add them from the photos library. Take some within the app. Or search online for photos using Bing. We recommend cropping them when adding images from photos before adding them to your notes because you don't actually have the option to crop your images after that. This is a very unpleasant setup 
Most people think of cropping after we've added our photos and we're trying to arrange them in relation to our notes. If the crop feature must be available at one point, it should be within the workspace. At this point, we're simply tired of OneNote on the iPad. It feels as if Microsoft is actively sabotaging the app. The office lens technology in OneNote enhances photos you take with your camera as whiteboards or documents, making them look like scanned images. Once in the app, you can treat the photos as you would any other image. Rotation is still to the 90 degree calibration, which doesn't leave much room for creativity. You can add alt text to your photos for better accessibility. Accessibility features are always welcome and OneNote pays attention to that. The app can also copy your image to sticky notes if you want to look at it later. It would be more useful if the sticky note took you back to the photo when you tapped on it, like an extraction of sorts. Lastly, you can lock your images, which embeds them in the writing canvas and prevents you from interacting with them in any way. We haven't found a way to unlock them without undoing the change, so unless you really mean it, avoid setting your photos as background, because that cannot be undone. We were unable to find stickers on other iPads. We're not sure if this is a bug or a version issue with Microsoft. There are actually quite a number of features that we're not able to find on all the iPads. Audio recording that doesn't sync to your notes is useless in a handwriting note-taking app in 2024. We still can't write or type notes while recording in OneNote. The app doesn't even transcribe the recordings. There are so many ways we can interact with our audio in different apps, so simply audio recording is no longer enough. You can attach any file that is less than 100 megabytes to your notes in OneNote. The app can preview supported files using markup where you can even annotate on them. We were happy to see some interaction with our attachments in OneNote because we felt it eliminates the need to use other apps, especially for quick and simple annotations. That was before we realized that those annotations are not saved in the app, which just makes the whole thing pointless. At least video support data detection. The 100 megabytes limit is decent for most document types unless you want to import PDFs with handwritten notes or videos. You can also add alt text to each attachment in your notes. OneNote can insert web links to your text or typed notes. We're hoping to be linking to pages in the same notebooks by now. Hyperlinks are always exciting to have, but they're hard to come by, so we're not really upset that we don't have them in OneNote, it just would have been nice to have them. The app can calculate simple math problems involving addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. It doesn't support any math equations though, so you still have to handwrite complex equations. Meeting details work with Outlook, which our team hasn't set up, and we're likely to cover those details in the OneNote course that we're set to do for paperless humans. The lasso tool selects everything on the page and moving items is not smooth, making the tool unpleasant to use. You can almost see every pixel on the page moving, 
moving items in a note-taking app must be smooth. OneNote also can't selectively pick up individual items on your page, and a selective lasso tool has become an industry standard on the iPad. Selecting your handwritten notes and shapes lets you change the color and thickness of your ink for both. The app can selectively change the color of your ink and that of your highlighter separately. And we found that kind of impressive. We especially love it because usually you just want to change the color of one. So sometimes you want to change the highlighter, sometimes you want to change the ink and really both. So we really appreciate this feature. When you select everything on the page, there's not much you can do with it except to cut, copy, or delete the section. However, with your handwritten notes, if you select those alone, you can also rotate them at 90 degree angles, which we absolutely dislike. OneNote should be allowing us to rotate through all the 360 angles by now, but they're simply not doing anything. One advantage of using an infinite canvas is the ability to create space between already existing notes. OneNote can add space vertically downward to create more room for you to add more notes. Adding space to the left side of your notes, horizontally sideways, is a bit more difficult to do. It's just not as responsive and you'll find yourself accidentally trying to add vertical space instead. But once you have magically managed to do it, this is really a sought after feature in most note taking apps. So OneNote is one of the few apps that actually support it. And that's actually quite brilliant. Just remember that you can't add horizontal space in the middle of your page like you can with vertical space. You have to do it at the very beginning on the left margin of your canvas. Microsoft OneNote still won't support multiple instances in 2024. Unbelievable. Multitasking in the app is left to split viewing with other apps where you can drag and drop items into OneNote. and out of it. At least the app now supports Scribble and it has true dark mode. So your colors automatically switch when you toggle between light and dark mode. The app has widgets that display your recent notes so you can quickly open them from the home page. You can also create quick notes if you like. You can search through your handwriting in OneNote but you can't convert it to text. OCR capabilities in OneNote are limited. The app doesn't search through the text and handwriting in your photos. So not much OCR happening in Microsoft OneNote. When searching through your notes, you can choose to focus on all the notes in the app, the current notebook, or a specific section of the current notebook. That gives you a lot of control over what you're searching. The search results are terrible though because they don't give you a good preview for the search terms that the app finds so more details in the result previews would actually make this a lot easier. The immersive reader is now limited to picking up only text so we'll definitely miss the handwriting conversion we used to have in the app. At least it can pick up text from PDFs. The AI reader sounds better than it did a few years ago. The organizational chart shows the links and relationship between different departments within the organization. 
if you ignore that it sometimes skips the first words. It's one of the best AI voices we've heard. You can adjust the reading speed of your reading assistant and choose a female or male voice. The female reader still sounds more natural and less robotic than the male one. Every individual can see their own position in the organization. They can identify who they are accountable to and who they have authority over. You can play around with a few settings to change the text in your reader to make it bigger or smaller. You can increase the line spacing between the letters in your words or change the font and themes. The immersive reader can help you with your reading when you turn on the syllables option. You can also learn the different parts of speech while reading by highlighting nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. All these features are useful for learning a new language, and we've always appreciated that about the immersive reader. It can focus on one, two, or five sentences for your reading to make it easier for you to keep track and follow on what it's reading. It can also translate your notes into several languages that the app can read out for you. Production, etc. Assez efficacement comme un animal multicellulaire. Leur forme n'est généralement pas constante. Le corps des protozoaires est microscopique et se compose des mêmes composants qu'une cellule. Even more impressive is the new reading coach in the app. You can choose its pronunciation sensitivity. The voice that is going to give you feedback for your reading practice. And the style of feedback you want. When you read something, the app gives you a summary with accuracy. Time spent reading, your reading speed, and five words to practice. For each word you're learning, the app can read it out for you. Identify. Or show you images to help you understand it. We can't help but wonder if it can also help children with their reading. Microsoft OneNote can make your notebooks more accessible for people with disabilities. The app will check the page you're currently on, as well as the entire notebook to pick up errors and warnings. You also get useful tips to improve your notes so everyone can access them. It's a really considerate and thoughtful feature, and we love it. The app does not open PDFs bigger than 100 megabytes because the app treats them like attachments. PDF reading, like you find in most handwriting note-taking apps where a PDF is treated like a separate document or notebook, is not available in OneNote. OneNote does not support hyperlinks for your PDFs, so navigating hundreds of pages is always painful. Its setup is ideal for small PDFs with very few pages, that's if it's even able to print out all those pages because for big PDFs that are less than 100 megabytes, the app simply won't be able to print it out. It does not recognize outlines and you can't bookmark pages. On the bright side though, you can annotate around your PDFs, a feature you rarely find in note-taking apps. The only other two note-taking apps that have such a setup are Noteful and Zoom Notes. So if you really like this setup, those are the two apps to look into. You can easily move and resize individual pages in your PDF printout. We love that the app can still treat each page as a separate entity in this printout, but you can't rotate your pages anymore. Exporting your notes from an infinite canvas is a mission impossible. 
Not only can the PDF pages be too big, but you're limited to exporting just one page at a time out of OneNote. The app does not export sections or notebooks, which makes the whole process too manual for a digital workflow. It makes more sense to collaborate within the app. You can invite people via email, or share your notebook link. You can control whether or not people edit your notes. We're always happy to see permissions because they're crucial when you're collaborating with others. You definitely want to have that control over what people do with your notes that you're sharing with them. You can also share your notes via email with Outlook. Microsoft OneNote has three main levels of organization for every notebook you add to the app. It must have sections and pages. You can then add more levels of subpages if you like. There is not much you can do with a notebook in OneNote on the iPad. You can't even delete them. The app only closes them to remove them from your device, but it's not deleted from your OneDrive. We should have the option to delete our notebooks from within the app without needing another app or device. You can move your sections across notebooks. OneNote can lock sections, but there is no way to recover the password if you forget it. That means Microsoft does not store your password and that's reassuring. However, it also means that forgetting your password will make you lose access to those notes forever. Until you remember, of course. But you must choose your battle, right? You can easily delete pages. The organization of pages in OneNote can serve as an outline for your notes if you add titles to all your pages. So that feels like killing two birds with one stone. You're creating your notebook while also creating the outline without any extra work. It makes your notebook much easier to navigate a bit later. When you delete your pages on your iPad, you can't recover them on your device. To do that, you need the desktop version of OneNote. It's great that the app can sync across all devices without the limitations of OS ecosystems. That is one of the best things to love about OneNote. However, we should also have an auto backup option in the app. That way, we can backup our notes to different cloud services. Because a backup is very important unless you're taking simple notes that you don't mind losing. Microsoft OneNote is a great app for anyone looking to take digital notes on multiple operating systems. Its infinite canvas and collaboration features also make it a decent whiteboard app. Our experience with the app for this 2024 review hasn't been great though. This is the buggiest we have seen OneNote since. We hope Microsoft of course fixes that, but we also feel Microsoft is neglecting the iPad version of OneNote because not much has happened in the past two years. If you choose to use OneNote, bear in mind that the app is only free until you use up the free 5 gigabytes of OneDrive that comes with your Microsoft account. And that brings us to the end of this video. What do you guys think about Microsoft OneNote? Let us know in the comment section down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you. Fantastic human for watching. See you in the next video.